What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown. This is Heresy Financial. And on Wednesday, the September inflation numbers came out. Yet again, much higher than what the consensus estimated those numbers would be. And at this point, with how consistently wrong they are, it seems like the only way that inflation is going to end is when the mainstream or the Federal Reserve starts to predict hyperinflation. Their track record seems like that will mark the end of inflation. But at any rate, September marked a 5.4% rise in inflation from September the prior year. That's the year over year number from September to September. And uh, that's again, the official numbers there. Um, now, it's funny because if you read any articles about this, one of the things that you're going to see is they're gonna highlight, uh, like they always do, if you exclude food, energy, rent, then the inflation numbers are actually a lot more muted. A couple months ago, they were saying exclude used car prices. There's always They're always going to look at the thing that made the inflation numbers the worst and say, hey, well, as long as you exclude that, then you know inflation isn't so bad. But the, the thing about inflation is when the average, when the basket moves up from one area, that's because people were actually buying those things. That means on average, the cost of living was actually higher because people had to spend more money on certain things that pushed the basket up. So it does nobody any good to say, oh, well, these things were a lot more expensive for a lot of people. But if we ignore that, everything else wasn't as expensive. Well, Obviously, if you take out the highest part of the index, the, the average is going to be a lot lower. That is, it's just math, right? But that doesn't mean that inflation isn't severe. Um, and so uh, the, the, that, that's been going on for a long time. We're all used to that. One of the things that I want to direct your attention, though, to is something that I think um, shines a light on what we're the messaging we're going to start to see a lot more of going forward into the future. Uh, this is an article. Um, it looks like something out of the Onion, Babylon being just pure satire, and it, it says the first line of this uh, article says, "Yes, inflation is back, and you should be relieved if not outright happy." Um, so. Here's the here's the, the the timeline of the messaging they've been sending us about inflation. The first thing that they used to say was inflation is impossible. Ignore the unprecedented increase in government spending. Ignore the fact that it was deficit spending and ignore the fact that those deficits were funded by monetary expansion, which is the Fed printing money. Uh, and ignore the fact that a large part of that spending was helicopter money. They said, ignore all that. And then, because they're saying ignore all that, they said inflation is not possible. But guess what? Inflation reared its ugly head. So then what did they start saying? They said, okay, well, it's transitory. First, we're going to have a spike in the rate of inflation, and then this, that, that's going to mute, get muted. It's going to go back down to the more normal rate of change in prices. Uh, it's just a temporary spike because it has nothing to do with monetary or fiscal policy. Now, just in case you're not aware, monetary policy and fiscal policy. Monetary policy is anything done by the central bank. So that's usually interest rates and asset purchases, the printing money, that kind of thing. Uh, fiscal policy is anything done by the central government. So that's usually taxes, tax cuts, uh, tax uh, increases, uh, cre tax credits, tax deductions, um, and then where they spend their money from all the money that they take in, where they're spending that money. That's all fiscal policy. So that's the difference there. Um, so they were saying, okay, I guess we were wrong about it being uh, impossible. Now it's going to be transitory. It's going to go away. Um, and the reason they said that is because they said basically it's just because of supply chains and COVID. Again, not due to monetary or fiscal policy, supply chains and COVID. And so uh, this, this spike in inflation is going to, uh, going to go away soon. Um, well, guess what? It didn't go away. And it's not going away. Um, in fact, it continues to break records and continues to exceed expectations every single month. Um, so what faith do we have that, uh, that it's going to go away when they've been continually wrong about everything in inflation up to that point? Um, even Powell, uh, just a few weeks ago, sitting in front of Congress, said that how persistent and severe inflation was, was actually frustrating. He used the word frustrating when talking to Congress about uh, inflation. So now, what are they starting to tell us now? Well, um, now the messaging is shut up and be happy about it. You should grovel at the feet of the central bankers and the central planners for being gracious enough to 
give you inflation. Um, really amazing to see this kind of uh, mentality just spoken outright uh, to how anybody could have this line of thinking. Now, it, it actually makes, when you think about it for a couple seconds, couple minutes, uh, it makes sense who would have this line of thinking. Uh, and it's anybody, um, the people with lots of assets, with lots of debt and little cash or uh, little reliance on uh, wages. Um, and the reason is because in an inflationary environment, that profile benefits greatly. And so inflation is really great for anybody with that financial profile. Um, and, and the reason is because inflation in its uh, most basic terms is the transfer of purchasing power from existing money into the new supply of money. That's really what it is. It's just transferring purchasing power. And um, things, it, it really, it's not that things are getting more expensive. A lot of people are looking around right now and they're saying, hey, things are getting more expensive. That's not what's happening. Policymakers are stealing purchasing power at a rate of 5.4% per year, if you believe the official numbers. And there are a lot of private statistics out there that point to inflation being probably 15% or more, more accurate, um, and uh, for, for the average uh, uh, American there. So that's your purchasing power getting transferred to anybody who gets their hands on that new money because they get to use that purchasing power and buy things at their old prices until that money works its way through the system and prices get bid up system-wide as a result of that new money entering in like of an auction bidding everything up. And so the, the recipients of new money um, who get that money first, get their hands, get to spend that new money first, they benefit at the lower prices, then all the other prices go up down the road. And so that's a transfer of purchasing power from everybody who gets that money last to everybody who got that money first. So is there any silver lining here? Well, yes, actually it is silver and gold and Bitcoin. Uh, gold and silver are beginning to show signs of life. They've been putting in higher bottoms and um, it could be a fake out, uh, but sentiment for precious metals and market positioning, especially among hedge funds, uh, has reached record bearish levels, which basically means all the money able to sell has sold, which means that the pendulum is at the extreme. And when it swings the other way, all of that selling pressure turns into buying pressure. Um, so it is, we are seeing a lot of signals that we are at or near bottoms, including commodities. Commodities in general have been performing extremely well lately. Uh, they've been not uh, leading they, and uh, precious metals have been lagging compared to commodities overall, which uh, would suggest sort of like a slingshot effect uh, getting, uh, getting ready to take place with precious metals. Uh, pair that with the fact that it looks like inflation is more persistent, more severe than expectations are consistently showing. And uh, the fact that deficit spending and negative real rates can't be dealt with uh, because even though we see inflation shooting up, you, you don't have the ability for uh, the central bank, central planners for uh, the uh, government or the uh, Federal Reserve to come at this and really start attacking inflation because of the problem of the fragile economy built on record mountains of low interest rate debt, debt that needs to get rolled over at low interest rates. Otherwise you have default, otherwise you have insolvency. And so you don't have the ability for interest rates to uh, catapult up in response to the persistent inflation, because if they do, then you get a uh, deflationary death spiral. You get insolvency roll across the system from all the debt defaults uh, because you can't roll that debt over. And so that looks to me like the market is finally starting to realize and that pressure that's the, the escape valve has been Bitcoin for a while because you don't have as much um, uh, central bank and bullion bank interest globally um, on, uh, you know, shorting it. Uh, but, uh, and so Bitcoin has been kind of an escape valve, but it looks like gold and silver are, are starting to show signs of being an escape valve on that pressure since interest rates on bonds can't respond and will continue to be in negative territory and maybe move further negative. So it looks like we are in for a nice ride with precious metals here as governments destroy their money in an attempt to slow the death of their planned economies. Um, and as this happens, people naturally look for alternatives to store their wealth. Um, and, and even without assets, even without silver, gold, Bitcoin, stocks, real estate, 
uh, when this starts to happen, people buy more stuff than they need today because eventually they're gonna need it. And if they wait long enough to buy it, it'll be more expensive later. So might as well just get rid of your currency today in exchange for something you'll need in the future so you don't need more of that currency in the future in order to get your hands on it. And the irony is that once you reach this point, inflation is no longer uh, a monetary phenomenon. It feeds on itself and uh, people start to dump their currency as fast as they can, knowing that the longer they hold on to it, the less real stuff they can get for it. The damage is done. It's like a snowball. It's already started rolling down the hill. The only thing we can do is kind of watch at this point. And again, from an individual standpoint, you can Hedge yourself against inflation by buying inflation protected assets, getting your money in gold, silver, Bitcoin, stocks, real estate as well. They all historically do better than cash during inflation. And finally, a few rapid fire resources if you'd like to start putting a little bit of money in gold and silver. If you just wanna buy some coins or bars and have them shipped to you, I like Appmex. If you want to store gold or silver conveniently with low cost in other countries, I use OneGold. If you'd like to buy gold or silver in your IRA to protect yourself from any taxable gains you might see on them, I like to use iTrust Capital. All of those are linked in the description below. And I will be in Miami, November 12th through 14th at the Market Disruptors live event that Mark Moss is hosting down there. There are gonna be a ton of really great featured speakers there. It's all about surviving the Great Reset. Love to see you there. If you can make it, I'll link it in the description below. You can check it out, buy some tickets, have some drinks with me down there. I'd love to meet you in person and attend this great event with you. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.